One thing Robert Eggers has said in interviews is that he's very interested in spirituality, mythology, um, history. And like we talked about earlier, that shows in his in his film. Here's my question, though, um, as it pertains to spirituality and mythology and even to a certain extent history. What do you think that the Northman has to say for the audience? What is the message this film is attempting to convey? That's really interesting. I mean, there's a lot more to it outside of of just like the time period, right? It can be mm-hmm. um, something that modern audiences can take away a lesson from. I think that like, and this is, I mean, I know we're in spoiler territory, so I feel like even weird saying it, but um, <laughs> the fact that in the beginning of the, I guess would be the last act of this film. Yeah. You learn that Amleth's father was a slaver himself and that his mother was a slave. Yeah. And that he's basically holding up the ideals of the same kind of person he's trying to fight. Yes. Um, I mean, you could take a lot away from that, right? Like you could say... Yeah. We we sometimes back people and if we really looked and think to, and, and thought about the politicians, the celebrities, the the friends, the family, whomever that we have the backs of, mm. um, whether mm. or not their intentions are good or bad. And I think um uh this is uh whatever, I don't care. Uh <laughs> so so my grandmother was not a very good person Mm. um and when she died my family opted not to have a funeral now in part that was because you know it was covid times and no one Mm. could go to a funeral but we decided not to have any kind of celebration anything Mm -hmm. and i think in part that came from um myself my parents looking at her legacy and going like what really was there to celebrate um she didn't have a lot of friends she didn't have a lot of people that loved her and people would be there out of more obligation than they would anything else yeah and um and i mean it sounds cruel and mean but at the same time we didn't really want to celebrate a person not worth celebrating right um but i think that you know that's a much more personal thing Um, but like even when you look at i guess the better thing would be like politicians right like who are you (laughs) really fighting for and uh, and are they worth fighting for to begin with and are their ideals worth fighting for uh because i think we get caught up in that loop sometimes and yeah you know, you got to like step away and see that perspective. Yeah. 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 I, I, I am in full agreement with you on this. And I kind of love what this film has to say. And I kind of hate what this film has to say. And I love the way I love the fact that the film makes me feel that way. Right. So Do you hate it because he makes the choice he makes in still moving forward with it. Like he, you know, the, brutal killing of like everyone well instead of just going off and being with the love of his life so 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 let me show you how i get there the first is i'm gonna write out what i believe the premise of this film to be so when i say premise just so everyone knows whenever i use the term premise um what i'm referring to is the specific shared experience that the film is trying to communicate to its audience right so the shared human experience that the film is trying to communicate through to its audience through the story uh, Leos Agree in his book, The Art of Dramatic Writing, has a way of talking about the premise. And it is basically like the traits of the character slash the values of the character when combined with a form of conflict have a result. That's the essence of storytelling. The character traits and actions and behaviors and values come up against conflict in some way, shape or form. And then there is a result to that, right? And by the way, that's very Shakespearean because the art of dramatic writing was written to be based on stage plays. It just so happens that it applies to all kinds of stories. Um, so, in, so this is my this is my take on the premise of this film. Vengeance 
even when satisfying the person who wants revenge is ultimately cold comfort and damaging to relationships. And I think you could possibly say, and the rest of the world at large. <laughs> um, now, the art of this premise is that each character has a different perspective on this premise, right? Um, in other words, if I, if I were to if I were to kind of run through this, if I was gonna gonna run through this and say like what all these characters are dealing with, Amleth dies thinking he did the right thing. Amleth is celebrating himself when he dies. He's looking at himself as saying like, wow, I accomplished the thing that I set out to accomplish. I am going to uh, Valhalla. They call it something slightly different than that, probably because it's more accurate. Um, but he, I believe that Amleth thinks that he's not only justified in the human sense, but also that he's sp he comes up with a spiritual perspective that also tells him he's justified in doing what he's doing. Um, but if you look at every other character here, his mother, who he's trying to save, who you brought up, the best twist of the whole film, it has to deal with his mother. She doesn't agree with him at all. She thinks that his father was basically, like you said, he's repeating the sins of his father, and those were atrocious, and she had to deal with that trauma. So she doesn't think he's right, and she thinks that she's backed by the spiritual perspective that she has to say that she's right. Her husband also believes that he's right. Her husband, it's really interesting the way the film does this, because we're made to believe that, that Amleth's uncle who ends up being his stepdad. <laughs> uh, we, we're led to believe that he's a horrific human being. But if you look at where he's at, he has removed himself from all major wars. He's living on a farm. He's trying to take care of people. Um, now, he's a little bit brutal with some of the slaves that he takes on, right? So we can we can criticize him there. But he, he seems like a much gentler person than we ever would have imagined him being. Um, and at least gentler than the other people of that time period that we've seen. Correct. And, I, and that's where Robert, e Robert Eggers gives us a place in time where you go, everyone's a bit brutal here. Yes. This guy yes. is the least brutal. <laughs> so you still don't really want to root for him, but like, he's not nearly as bad as you might think. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and so it's this, it's this, it's this interesting thing, right? Because all of these characters believe a thing. But and they all believe that they're right in believing the thing that they believe. But Amleth is the only one who gets what he wanted. Amleth, Amleth's uncle believes he's right, but he dies after seeing his family murdered. Amleth's uh, mother informs him that his father was awful, which we talked about already, and, th and that his uncle is great, but she dies after seeing the only child she really loves murdered. Amleth's girlfriend believes that his children are his destiny, that he should give up his pursuit, but he ignores and abandons her. The only person who gets what they want in this film and believes he's justified in it is Amleth. So here, here's my problem. I think that the premise of the film is brilliant and well-stated and well-told of a story about how it plays out. But the reason I hate the premise is because I think, and this I can't control this, right? I struggle I struggle with this in my own writing. I think the I think that some people seeing this film will say, what a great revenge film. Amleth got everything he wanted. Cool. And and that is basically not understanding the story, which means that Robert Eggers is sort of a little bit off the hook in that regard. But it's like what people thought the Joker was going to be, right? Like people thought the Joker was going to be like justification of the Joker. It ended up, I don't think being that, I think basically that film pretty clearly stated that like, this is a psychotic human being and we shouldn't be like him. This film though is a little bit, it paints Amleth in a, in a light where you could, if you wanted to believe that he was right and got what he wanted. And it was heroic in some way, shape or form. And that, hurts me a little bit because I don't want people to think that. <laughs> right? So, so yeah, yeah, I agree with you. So here's the here's my hope. I guess yes. I don't know if this will happen or not. The Joker is very much a because everybody understands who Batman is. Yeah. It's a super approachable film for yes. e for everybody. Yes. Because this film 
uses Shakespearean type of English. Um, it switches sometimes between that and actual Norse uh, terms, you know, yeah. Norse languages. Um, and then it has this kind of artsiness about it. That's just who Robert Eggers is. It's less approachable. Yeah. Than the Joker is. And so my yeah, hope very much. is that the wrong audience doesn't <laughs> find this film <laughs> because there, there definitely is a, well, you know, if I just murder everybody, yeah. um, <laughs> right. I end up at the gates of heaven. Yes. So perfect. Correct. Correct. The, do you think, okay, so I understand what you're saying and I, I totally get where you're going. There are a couple of different options that, as a filmmaker or as a writer, you could have gone down. Yeah. And it could have fixed that very easily. Yes. So one is that he chooses not to go back. Yeah. Um, if you've not seen the film and you've, you have at this point decided, you know, I don't care about spoilers. I just want to hear what you guys have to say. So there's a point in the <laughs> right, film. Right, right, right. <laughs> there's a point in the film where Amalith um, takes Olga, Anya Taylor Joy, and yeah. his girlfriend basically his his yeah basically like these two people who have fallen in love um they run off and they get in a little boat and basically they've kind of decided like we're just gonna live a new life yeah and then they get about i don't know what would you say like 300 feet out into the ocean <laughs> and he goes <laughs> not very far he goes nah i gotta go back and murder people <laughs> right so at that point, you go like, okay, well, you could have just stayed on the boat. But I understand yes. that's not the uh, relief of an ending that you might want. Right. The other ending that you get is this fight scene Yeah. Uh, on the side of a volcano, the gates to hell. And both he and his uncle die, which right. is fine. At that point... You could do that. You could cut to black. Right. And and that's your fine story. Right. But then it shows a Valkyrie yeah. um, hoisting him up to, to Valhalla, to the gates of heaven. Yeah. And I think that that is the one thing that if you took that part out. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're right. Like, in the sense, all of these problematic things that he's done, all the killing and murdering and bloodshed that's happened... Right. It's now justified. Right. Um, not just for him, but for a portion of the audience that yes. might go see this film. Yes. And he's not right. In, <laughs> right. In, I mean. Even Robert Eggers would, would for sure tell you that he's not right. No. And I think that that is the thing about a Robert, Robert Eggers film, all three of his films, there is nobody in any of his films where at the end of it, you go, yeah, that guy, that was, right. <laughs> that was right. the person that was right. Like, uh, right. I mean, Olga, Anya Taylor-Joy's character, might be the only person in this film that you could have any kind of sympathy for. Correct. Right? Like, Correct. she's just a slave, and then she becomes impregnated, and she's excited about this new life that she's going to lead, and now she's left with two children yeah. and being a single mother. Right. Uh, and possibly who knows what her where her life leads her to will she become a slave again like who knows right um but the you know every main character that you're supposed to be rooting for really right. is not worthy yeah and i think for me personally like how would i have ended it differently and this is not necessarily better because i think that robert eggers is actually trying to prove a point um in the ending of this film but i probably would have ended it myself in him not getting a reward for his behavior. I think the reason why Robert Eggers ends with him getting the reward for his behavior, which is kind of going to get into my second topic a little bit more, is because I believe partially what Robert Eggers is trying to say, and I think this is true of all of his films thus far, not having seen The Witch and just hearing him talk about it, I kind of can see this as a central theme, and that is almost all human beings are presented with value systems and beliefs, particularly those who are spiritual, but it could be anybody, even if you're atheist or agnostic, this could still be you, where they start governing your behavior so much 
that it gives a force feedback loop of positive affirmation that what you believe is right and must be true and that everything else that's happening around you must be related to that belief. So like, I don't, I've seen clips from the witch, haven't seen the whole movie of the witch, but it's kind of obvious that the witch, when you think that this, that, that your bad luck is attributed to the devil, you will start to see the world through those eyes and see every negative thing that happens in your life be spiritual forces working against you even if it's your own bad choices even if it's your own uh if it's your own sin that the devil didn't do anything you just you just can't be a perfect person and you just do some bad things but if when you can place that on something else and then give yourself a feedback loop about it and i think that that's essentially what robert eggers is saying here is that amleth is not that much unlike a suicide bomber that you might see in real life it's You've been promised this thing. You're going to get this thing. You now believe as an extremist that that is what what you are. And the human brain in its in its throes of death, could it could it then conjure up the vision that this is what you're going to go get? I think what he's saying is is that he's saying for Amleth, for this character who believes that he is imbued with spiritual purpose, even though all the characters think that. By the way, and that's where I think the the premise wins he still shouldn't be doing these things, but is because of his religious conviction. And I think that that's a, it's a fascinating way to end the film, but I do think it causes some, it causes, it It begs the question, should they have not shown him getting the reward? Because earlier in the film, it sort of shows him dreaming of getting that reward. And I think it would have been better if he had had that dream of getting that reward, but never actually gotten it. And I almost wonder if we could talk to Robert Eggers, if he would say, I probably would have ended it there, but the studio made me put the other part of it in. Maybe. I wonder but, about that. But I think, um, I mean, like, I know you haven't seen The Witch. And I don't want to spoil The Witch for anybody. But you're right in the sense of that story is about you creating the devil that you become. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and like it is that it is if you continue to believe in it there is some justification there there is some truth to it yeah and this film does a lot of that same kind of thing if you believe so fully mm -hmm. in your own belief system then nothing else matters um and that's the reason why you could have slaves during that time period yeah. and like i know that it's different than the American, like, African slave trade. Yes, but, very like, different. It is, in and of itself, still a, we believe these people are slaves because of our religious beliefs and their religious beliefs and how they're right. different. Right. Um, we believe that we should be kings because, you know, of Norse mythology. Yep. And our connection to it. Um, everyone has their destiny, and then you have these kind of like witch doctor characters who yeah. can talk to the gods and, and it's all, um, it's all very interesting in what people believe or not believe. And I agree that I think maybe the visual components of the ending might've come from the studio. Yeah. But at the same time, Robert Eggers is the kind of person who dabbles in what's real and what's not yes um so was his ascension to valhalla real or was that just him believing still yeah you know exactly. like in his last moments of life like do we uh it, it's not the reward but do we just believe right that we can go well and another another take on it could have been too you know show show that because he believes that's going to happen show that show the valkyrie taking him to valhalla and then cut back to his lifeless corpse decomposing right like like True. this is what he yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what actually is you know something along those lines